Hey everyone, here is the first review of 2024 and we are starting off with a bang as this Titoni Impetus Ceram Tech is quite the watch and there's a lot to talk about here. Titoni released these late last year and I think it's safe to say that the response has been 50-50. I see many loving it and many who don't like it at all, but those seem to be the same people that don't like how Auras does the integrated lugs on the Aquas, but more on that later. But those people are people who have not had this watch in hand, and I have to say, this is just one of those polarizing pieces. The design, you could say, is inspired by Oris, Tag, Bulgari, and even Corum, and this is a stainless steel and ceramic case, and as usual with Titoni, a lot of cool and unique touches. And this watch comes with both a bracelet and a rubber strap, and it's worth mentioning as well that this color combo I have here is probably the most tame of the ones available. So let's get into the review of this piece and I will discuss the design, the materials, how it all wears and feels, and why with a price of $3,000 did they not use their own in-house T10 movement. As usual, I will put all the specs on screen shortly, but let's start off and talk about this design. Now, of course, you'll have your opinions and I have mine, but first things first, this watch is kind of one of those watches without a category. The bezel does not rotate, nor does it have a loom pip, so it's not a dive watch, yet it does have a screw down crown and 200 meters of water resistance. It's obviously not a pilot or a field watch, so that puts it in more of the sport watch category or maybe due to the look, a nautical watch. What category would you put this watch in? When you look all around this Titoni Impetus Ceram Tech, I'll be the first to say I'm not in love with the name, it is a quite good looking piece, at least in my opinion, and there are a lot of fine details and finishing. At 43 millimeters though, this is not a small piece, so those of you hoping for 40 millimeters or smaller, you're out of luck at least for now. Now you saw all the specs on screen and we have the usual, of course, an automatic movement, a sapphire crystal front and back. Countless watches have these specs these days. I mean, it's pretty much the norm. But when you look closer, you start to see a few things that may set this apart from the others, like the milled vertical lines on the dial, the hands that do remind me of the Claire Hydroscaf, that's the second watch in a row that has similar hands to that model, the amazing applied indices that look like they were carved out of a solid piece of metal for each one, and then there is the blue chapter ring with your minutes slash seconds, it's a beautiful dial, though I don't really love the ZRO2 on the dial. I know it's for the ceramic, but I think Impetus alone would, would have looked a lot better. Maybe it's just the font that is throwing me off. Before I discuss the ceramic elements of the case, let's talk other colors available. Like I said, I feel I picked the most tame version of this model, or maybe it's a tie with the blue dial model, but there are two that are a little more out there, and one of those two that is really out there. So if you really like your watches to stand out or you'll want to be adventurous, check out the teal aqua one with the silver dial. And then probably the most out there one, the teal dial with the yellow chapter ring, yellow hands, teal strap, and a PVD case. Now it's definitely wild and yet there is no standard black dial. And I thought, a black dial on a stainless case bezel combo or an all stealth, all black model would look really hot in my opinion. And then we get to the ceramic elements of the Ceram Tech. And I have to say the way they integrated the ceramic is interesting. This is not an all ceramic case like some brands have done. And it seems to me at least that the ceramic on the case is put over the stainless steel case, but I'm not exactly sure how the ceramic is attached to the case. The ceramic runs the whole sides of the case, excluding the lugs, and then all around under the bezel, and I see no visible screws, so I'm going to assume some kind of glue or maybe some hidden screws. Either way, it does look very good and well integrated, and the ceramic has the same ribbed lines that you find on the dial. It's a very cool look, you will also find ceramic on the screw down crown, and I just love how this was done. 
It looks fantastic with the Totoni Plum Blossom logo. The blue ring around the crown is ceramic as well. One area I think that they could have used ceramic would have been the bezel, but then I started thinking about it, and I wonder how it would have looked seeing as the bezel is actually one piece and it doesn't have an insert, so that would mean the entire bezel would have needed to be ceramic and I'm not sure how that would have looked, and it might have made the watch look a little cheap or like a swatch watch. The movement used is the ETA 2892-82, and it has a gorgeous 18 karat gold plated rotor with Titoni laser cut into it. It's beautiful, and no doubt the 2892 is a very good movement. It does make one wonder why Titoni did not use their T10 manufacture movement. Not only would it have made sense in a watch of this price, and those movements are also COSC certified, but you will also get more power reserve with the T10 having 68 to 75 hours versus 44 hours of the 2892. Now the plus side, well, it's going to be much easier to get the 2892 serviced. Still, what's your opinion? Should they have used their own movement in this new model? Now, some of course are saying the price is high and I guess that's all subjective, just like anything. But in my personal opinion, I feel the price is in line for what it is, considering what Titoni charges for their other models, this being a new case, the ceramic, and the fact that it comes with both the bracelet and the custom rubber strap. Yep, unlike a lot of other manufacturers that make you choose, Titoni is giving you both. I personally really like both the bracelet and the rubber, and I've had a hard time deciding which li I like better. But like I said, you do get both, so it doesn't really matter. You can pick whichever one you want to wear on any given day, and when you want to change it out, it is extremely easy. Both the bracelet and the strap have quick release mechanisms built in, and these are not like you see on a lot of micro brand offerings. The buttons to push to remove the strap actually resemble the bezel shape, and they feel much sturdier than the little prongs on a lot of cheaper watches that have these quick release straps. I found it very easy to swap them out. The bracelet is gorgeous as well, and yes, these are integrated lugs, so no, you're not going to be putting on any third party straps, but that's where it's nice that you get both the bracelet and the rubber. Now back to the bracelet, and it's a beautiful link, and it looks phenomenal on the watch, and the clasp is gorgeous as well, with the Plum Blossom logo, and the clasp does have the on-the-fly extension. But to Tony, where is the push button in the Blossom logo like on the C-Scoper? This clasp has just buttons on the sides, and it just seems like a letdown, especially when you can get that clasp on a watch that is almost $1,000 cheaper from the same brand. That said, both the bracelet and strap do look and wear great, and if I had to choose which one I like to wear the most on my 7.5 inch or 19.05 centimeter wrist, it would be the rubber strap. It just really molds well to the wrist, and with the 12 millimeter thickness of the case and the way the watch sits, it's just extremely comfortable on the rubber, and I would probably leave the bracelet for when I want to dress the watch up for special occasions. And lastly, the loom, and you know, with the watch like this, I wasn't sure what to expect. I was hoping to see uh, the loom be really good as how the hands and indices have a decent amount of loom compound applied and that this would glow brightly in the dark. And you know what, I wasn't disappointed. Now it's not going to be as good as the C-Scoper as those just have more area for loom to be applied, but I doubt you'll have an issue seeing the time in the dark with this one. You know, Titoni seems to still be a little polarizing as they are a brand that is still not overly marketed in the USA, so they're not as well known here. I have been covering the brand for over 10 years now, as have many other sites, and I love what they have been doing, especially in the last five years or so. And no, this is not any kind of influencer garbage or anything like that. I just wish more people would give this brand a chance. The brand is over 100 years old, and while the name recognition isn't on Omega or Breitling level, I really think Titoni makes gorgeous, well-made, and well-appointed pieces, especially the sport watches like these or the C-Scoper 300 and 600. 
But as always, that is just my opinion, and I hope I give you a good look at the watch here. Of course, if you have any questions, please ask below. And if you feel like reading, I will have a written article with a bunch of photos over at watchreport.com. Please join us over on social media. We are our most active on Instagram currently, but we are on Facebook and X. Boy, does it sound strange to say that, uh, but we are on X as well. Anyways, if you like this video, you know the drill. Please consider helping us out and hitting that like button, subscribing, turning on notifications, and don't forget you can share this video on your pages and social media. And like I said, don't be afraid to comment below. It's the best thing you can do to help us out. That's all for this one. This is Don Evans from Watch Report. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.